Hello and welcome to part one of our Japanese landing craft air cushion, or as we're going to call it, the hovercraft. And this is by Trumpeter, it's 172 scale. And if you are just watching this for the first time, I've done the box opening and review of this at the start of this play playlist, so it's worth um, going back and viewing that. Otherwise, Let's start with this. What have I got? First of all, please um, subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notifications tab to uh, get notified each time we release another video. Also, don't forget to comment. Comments are welcome, and at the end, give us a thumbs up if you like it. Okay, so let's let's get started. Now, first of all, I just want to mention we've got a few extra things here that are going to help with this. Um, one is I've got a, a new camera, which uh, is going to help with uh, hopefully a bit better quality in both um, sound and video. Also, we have a ring light located above here, which should uh, light up what we're doing a little better. And let's first of all have a look so inside, what I've already done, okay, so what we've got here is I'm all packaged up here. They're all open, but I'm keeping them all inside the plastic. I've labeled them, as you can see. So it's easy to have to go digging through so often and trying to find, oh, which sprue was that? Well, that's all sorted. Um, these little extra bit of plastic that's kept in there so they stay flat. We've got the clear bits in there so they stay protected. And we'll just be able to work out of this box because it's a nice deep box and it's going to be handy for that. What I do is I either just keep that to my left or put it under the floor, under the table, and uh, work from it. Now, we also have um, some paints already for, for this. I've already got ready, so the majority of it is all Tamiya, although we do have a few Mr. Hobby paints in here as well. All the colours are mostly different greys. There's also uh, NATO black, we've got gunmetal, we've got metallic greys, um, chrome silver, metallic grey, yes. Um, so most of it blacks. So most of it is going to be grey as the landing vehicle is so that's most of the colours I think the orange is actually for the props on the fans that power it um, got copper there as well I added that myself because there may be a bit of um, extra um, detail we might want to put in there some of the piping and so forth that might be missing from the kit but we'll see how we go I've got the painting guide sh sheet here just kept over to my left there where I can see it because uh, I think pretty early on we're gonna have to paint some stuff but it's quite good um, but that's all ready to go we've also got all the decal sheets in here and um, again they'll be put somewhere safe out of the way where nothing's gonna get anything spilt on it that's the most important thing especially with decal sheets uh, paints, well, they'll go in the other room where I do my airbrushing. And speaking of airbrushing, look what we've got. Bring the camera down a second and have a look. So we have a new airbrush. So I have to thank Jason from Aussie Scale Modeler, who's uh, given me this new airbrush. My airbrush is just a, a cheap 40 50 dollar airbrush that when it gets dirty enough i throw it away and get another one <laughs> but i think he's he, i've been advised that if i have something better i, I won't look back so here it is so i'll take the cover off and have a look in here quickly i'm looking forward to using this look at that it's nice eh? it's a nice big uh, cup for the paint um, triggers nice and light on it. You've got uh, a little tool to un pull things apart and take the needle out. There's another little 
cap looks like for the front nozzle area so, yeah so that's going to be great to give that a try out on this build and uh, again thanks heaps Jace and I will leave a link in the description below if you would like to go over and check out his website um, lots of content there lots of good old Australian content there where he interviews and reviews Australian products um, Australian businesses related to the hobby trade and does quite a few um, interviews with models as like myself actually <laughs> but anyway uh, yeah get yourself over there and have a look at his um, YouTube site and um, give a give him a give him a go cheers all right so uh, thanks thanks Jace and this will go to good use now we've also got uh, the usual tools which I'll just bring that over quickly and have a look at we've got our sprue cutters here by display which are uh, a slightly cheaper but I, and I think better version than the Tamiya ones these are really really light it just takes no effort at all and it cuts beautifully and yeah very nice so yep I won't go into those details we've got tweezers there of different sizes and angles knives for cutting we've got glues uh, Tamiya cement we've got this one which is actually SMS cement and then I have my go-to Loctite precision RCA glue all ready to go and then of course um, I have some containers here which I use to any pre-built bits and pieces uh, I put them in containers just to keep them safe put a lid on it put them aside they're not going to get damaged um, these ones are okay are good for smaller bits but also good for mixing um, small amounts of paint in as well in fact with the lid on they're quite airtight so if I want to make up a color that I know that I'm going to go back to over the course of the build uh, even when it's had thinner added to it I can make some up in here and keep coming back to this as long as I keep the lid on that paint stays fine I just give it an extra stir a mix up mix and um yeah it, it's great certainly don't uh, waste any paint so put those aside just to get the camera back up again all right um we've got the instruction manual which is set up in front of me and of course the box itself the lid i usually put that up in front of me against the wall so I've got something visual to look at and keep me inspired <laughs> the manual itself is, is a little plastic cutting board I use as a backing and then I use a peg to keep the page open and that just sits just forward of where it is now so it's easy to see and as you can see we are on step one and step one is basically putting the hull on and the deck and just bring that over and have a look so these are the two pieces that need to be glued together now let me just move this manual out of the side what i'm going to do too is during the video i'm going to show a bit more of actually doing the work on the parts whereas my most of my previous videos are on the format of well here's what we're going to do and then I'll be back in a second and then I show you it done and then I talk about anything that you know might have been a problem on the way or how I did it and that but in this video we're going to try and bring the camera in a bit more often and, and actually watch the actual physically doing um, some of these parts all right so step one it is okay now what I've noticed with this and I mentioned it in the 
uh, box opening was that there's a little bit of needs a bit of a clean up and I need to wash these parts see there's some I don't know if it's like a mold or something but there's a few of these brown spots around particularly I think it was on this one where did I see yeah in here um, we'll use this camera so there it is there now let me just turn on this other extra light we have and it would help if I plug it in <laughs> and that's why that light's not working okay back in a second okay let's try that again so let's turn on this light there we go that's a little bit more it's probably the light the ring light that's up above probably better for when I'm close close up doing some close-up shots so anyway like I was saying there's some of these brown spots in here you know that I need to tidy up and on the edge there look at that I don't know if it's mold or something so I need to clean these up now the instructions are saying first of all we have to glue these two together which is simple enough there's these points here which will join up with these pins here and it's just simply a matter of uh, dropping it on there and gluing it but because this needs to be painted we need to look at how we're going to go about this and I'm just noticing look at all the mold under there or whatever those brown marks are there can you see that all that along there I definitely need to clean that all up. It's only on one. Oh no, it's a bit on that side too. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, and not only that, but I don't think I mentioned it earlier, along with the bits and pieces, I am going to put some lights on this. And I'll just grab it once. Okay. So I do have individual little lights like this to use. But I also have these strip lights here little battery pack connects to and here they are like that and to be honest there are really only possibly two places where I want to put lights and that's in the two cot pits on either side so I'm not going to need much but what I do have to think about is mounting this where this will go so uh, this being underneath we need to look at how the um, air cushion is going to sit and how much clearance I have now the air cushion itself show you that as I bring that over you see here it's just all rubber so that's it there much and this will sit on there like that somehow. And will sit in there. Now, I have heard that there's problems with the fitting of this, but we'll work that out. But now, if I turn that over and we look underneath, you can see how much clearance I have. And it looks pretty good. Or not. <laughs> yeah, I think you might have to do a bit of measuring, but it does look as though that's sitting a bit too high, uh, which won't be too much problem because I also have one of these. That's probably going to that's much better. So that's going to sit below the level of that. Yeah, so we'll be able to connect that up pretty sure to light these up. Yeah. So when you think about it, it looks to me like this does not need to be painted at all um, because you won't be able to see it. It's going to be completely covered. So that's a good thing because that will help when it comes to working out 
how I will attach something like that to the base. Yeah. The other thing too will there will be need to be a couple of holes drilled to run wires up. So we have to figure out where the lights are actually going to go. You know, I know this is an extra thing I'm doing, but it's still always good advice, I find anyway. Always go through your instructions. Step one to the last step to make sure that you can figure out your process of fitting because going step one to two to three to four to five you can run into problems because yeah sometimes things may not work out as they should particularly painting um, because going with the instructions here just grab the seat for you now with the instructions is well trumpeter anyway they don't tell you anywhere in here about painting. Whereas if you're doing uh, Ravel kits, throughout the instructions, they'll have the kit, the, the part number, and then they'll have what color that piece is. So what you gotta do with these is you need to figure out what needs to be painted and how much can be built to, and then be painted, you know? so. There's no point putting whole sections like this together when you realize that things have got to be painted three or four different colors in there. Um, sometimes I find it's much easier to paint parts before you put them on, uh, particularly really small stuff. But anyway, let's uh, not get too far ahead. All right. All right. Let me just get organized here and uh, we'll be back in a sec. Okay, I'll just show you now. I just quickly washed these in warm soapy water and rinsed them all off properly and uh, all that mold that was on there, gone. So perfectly clean now. I'm going to put these outside to dry for a while and we'll come back and get back into it. Okay, so while they're out there drying, I'm just going to take a look at here. So we need to put these little brackets on. So the bow here has two and there's two on the back here. Let's, uh, let's get them off the sprue. Uh, what they are is they work as hinges, I think, for the ramps to go down. If you see over in the next step, we put the ramps together and they, I think they click in so they can go up and down. We'll check on that. Pretty sure that's the case. So I'll put my instructions back. Okay, so sprue B. And we need pieces B35 and 36 which are here, 35 and 36. Take them off. I'm pretty sure they're there. They can't get mixed up. Ah, that's good. and then we need B51 and 44 there's 51 44 I don't think these could get mixed up either because they're left and right. Okay, finished with that, and put that away. Okay. 
Okay, so we just clean these up a little bit. take a little bit of excess off like that and then what I do is I grab a sanding stick one of my ones in here that off. I'm just noticing there's some sink marks there, but I don't know how noticeable they will be. I think they're on the side that's flat against the ship, but that is actually sticking up a little bit. You can see that there, so that needs to be trimmed off smooth flat otherwise that's not going to fit flush against the hole we'll just run a knife across it like that like that pretty much did it just the sand hear that in the background there but hear this sort of high pitch sound they're they're cicadas and uh being summer here in sydney australia cicadas come out when it gets to a certain temperature i think it's the temperature anyway you, you never hear them when the sun's not out too if the sun goes behind a cloud they all go quiet you can hear them i don't know if you can hear the microphone pick them up I've actually got the door shut to the balcony to block out the noise. But they'll stop after a while. They just don't continuously go on and on all day. Thank God. But they make a racket. And they're no good for when you're trying to record YouTube videos. <laughs> so. It's about done, I think. That looks good. Yep. And that one has a little bit of a raised sink mark there to just blade across. That's fixed. And uh, these won't have to be painted separately. I think I can paint these after I put them on. Because these will be, I think they'll be the silver or grey that the main superstructure I will call it on each side is going to be uh, and these ones here are on the rear not the bow but the stern of it chop the excess off smooth again it's, it has a little bit raised in there as well normally it wouldn't matter it's just that these do have to sit flush uh, against the structure so but normally if those were on the inside of it it wouldn't be a problem
See, normally in my other videos, what I would be doing is, uh, I'd be doing all this off camera. I'd have the pieces cut out. And I'd say, right, well, those will go on there. And then we uh, cut to it. I'll be saying, well, be back shortly, <laughs> which I will be saying, but not as often. And we'd come back and see them already attached. Whereas this time, I'm gonna watch them get being attached. Which we can't yet because that piece is still drying outside. I want to make sure that there's definitely no drops of water anywhere on it. So what I'll do now is we'll just put them up there and we'll skip ahead to part, uh, it's not part two, to step two. We are in part one, of the video. So step two, well, there's where those pieces are going to go here and here. Step two is actually the ramps. So we've got part C2 and C5, and there's A14 and A15. It looks pretty simple. I'm just curious to see how they relate to these and whether they actually do allow you to fold up and down. Unlike Ravel and other models, they don't tell you not to glue. You know, so usually you'd see a little symbol with a glue thing with a cross through it. Um, but here it doesn't have that. But then it doesn't tell you to glue it either. So anyway, I will grab that, that sprue. C5. It's so much easier when you can just look at the box and go straight the sprue you need. So here we go. Sprue C. Some small bits on here. Looks like some uh, railings there. Careful with those. So one of each side here. There's five, number five and number two. That's what we want. So let's take these off. Make sure I leave. I'll show you this when I've taken it off the way these um, are actually connected. If you can see this, cameras will be able to pick it up. Um, so there's a bit of a gap of plastic where it attaches to the piece on that side, whereas this there isn't. It actually goes right over onto it like that, you see. So which means that we're going to have to do a bit of tidy up there. So this one's easy. Flip them off. You see how the way I had to cut that off and it's left. That will just, I'll just snip that off and sand them down like I did the other two pieces. Those two nubs there. That's fine. That'll be easy. But these ones, they went on, they came off a bit differently. So I have to be a bit careful the way I trim those off and, and sand them so that they sit on there because these it's a sort of a curved surface on this uh, ramp. Uh, and there's also another bit of plastic, excess plastic stuck up there too. That'll have to be trimmed off as well. Okay. And there's a little bit, you can see a little bit on the edge there needs trimming. That side's fine. This side's got a little bit of extra plastic on there. So what I'll do there is just lightly run that knife. Just using the weight of it. No effort at all. And that takes that off. Um, these ones here were quite simple. They're just runs across there, there. Now you'll notice all I use is a Stanley knife with these blades that are replaceable all the way through. I don't use proper um, number five blade knives 
Um, I find these do just the same job, you know. I know I'll probably get criticised, but they do. They do the same thing. All right. Um, these ones here, I'm just going to be a bit careful. So, off like that. Just barely feel where that was. So we'll just sand that there. Yeah. You wouldn't even know it was there. Okay. Uh, there's that piece in there that's sticking up. Trimmed off like that. Um, these will be on the inside. These, there's a piece that fits over here. So this one here will attach to the other side of that. We'll just take this off quickly and have a look. Um, this one comes up. This one's connected even a bit better. You can see the length and the connection points on the sprue there. So they're going to be easy to trim off. Just take it off like that. That one. Beautiful nippers these ones are. They're so light. Just so light, you know, and sharp. <laughs> and they cut really straight. So I know I've got to trim those off. Let's just have a look at how this is going to sit. So that's going to go on there like that. I'm guessing. Somehow. That will. We do need to trim them off so that fits because there's a bit of a lip there where that fits up under. It's in there. Alright, so I said I was going to say it before, back shortly, and I will because I'm just going to trim this one up, tidy all these pieces off, and we'll see how it fits up against that. Okay, back shortly. Okay, so trimmed up these pieces, these two pieces here, and there's two little notches here that sit on the inside of the piece there and then it sits flush against the top so can't go wrong there but like in most cases even when it's sitting in the right position you'll see that get in there like that there's always movement so you've still got to make sure you line up the teeth I guess you'd call them so make sure all these are lined up and it's pushed down and then that'll glue in place which it does it looks really looks fine uh, but i will um i put i'll put a couple of clamps or well, not even that actually i've got look in my little clamp container and i think these pegs might be enough uh, if I was to just get that lined up like that and put that like that and put another one like that oh, couldn't ask for anything better than that I have smaller ones too which be fine for there 
another small clamp there. Right. Well, that looks good. That's ready to glue. They're, they're lined up perfectly. All right. That aside, I won't glue that just yet because I'll get the other side done first. In which case, we needed uh, sprue A. Sprue A, and that looks like them there. Which it is, number 15 and 14. So we do exactly the same thing. They look exactly the same, uh, just are not as long, obviously. And these look even neater. I don't see any flashing on them at all. So they look good. So I'll, I'll whip these off now and clean them up and we'll see how they look and how they're gonna glue together, okay? back shortly. I mean, I, I could, you could sit here and I could, you could watch me clip them off just like I did the last two, but really I'm just repeating um, what I've already done before. So you're not, you're not missing anything. Okay. All right. Back shortly. Okay. So got these two pieces all cleaned up. Didn't take long at all. And uh, they fit together perfectly. Good. Clamp them down with a couple of these. One there. One there. One here. <laughs> the other reason why I like going away for a break to work on stuff off the cameras because I have my music playing in the background. I've got Bon Jovi going at the moment. Obviously, I can't have that playing while I'm filming. Otherwise, <laughs> YouTube won't like that. So, um, Working in silence is okay, but, uh, you know, couldn't do a whole video of everything without music in the background. <laughs> All right, so that one is pretty much right. What I'll be doing is using the um, SMS Extra Thin, which is in a Mr. Hobby, Mr. Cement uh, container, but uh, the SMS one is just as good as Mr. Hobby or Tamiya Extra Thin. So I'll just uh, wipe that around there and it'll just set. Might just put one more clamp in there just to be sure. Okay. But first, I do want to check how they're fitting on the actual base of the hovercraft. So we look at the instructions now. Other side. Uh, they'll just sit down in there. I just want to know whether they clip in I'm guessing they will before the base actually goes down on the hydro on the um, the rubber uh, cushion itself. But of course, we've got to drill a hole in here so we can run a wire up into the cockpit area. And I've decided there's only going to be one light on the whole model, and that'll be just to light up that cockpit because. You know, I don't think there is, well, there isn't any lights on these things, really. Particularly if they're working at night time, then if they're ever going to be operating at night, then that's going to be in covert situation. They don't want the thing lit up, coming out from behind that ship, inside the ship, and going onto the shore lit up, do they? So there'll be just a slight dim light where the... Um, pilot I guess or the captain wouldn't be a captain would it yeah I don't know what you put call the people but there's like a seat there's three people set inside this at least um, I'm gonna call it a cockpit okay all right so um, I'll go check out there and see how these are dried up and we'll do a, a test fit and then glue those together 
that'd be a good move. Then we're going to have to look at doing some um, painting. Okay. Or at least some undercoating I'd like to get done if I, if I can today. So I've got the rest of the day for this to dry as it's now 12.20 p.m. in the afternoon. All right, back in a sec. Okay, so what I've done is um, I've just tested this against here and it it doesn't, um, these are permanently glued in place. So they'll be closed like that at both ends. It's just the way it is because the cushion has to go around the outside of it. So that's going to glue in place. These little pieces will sit in there. They have nothing to do with holding this. They just, for aesthetics, um, on the front and on the bow and on the back. So that's fine. So what I will do now is I'll glue these together and um, they won't take long to dry. And this I'm going to undercoat the whole thing. But before I do that, just in the center here, and there's already a mark there for me, is, a, is where I'm going to drill a hole because this is where the cockpit is going to be up here so we're going to need to run a light up through into there which will come and go <coughs> excuse me down into here now obviously we've got the other piece that sits on here so there'll be off we'll need a hole to go through there um, to attach our switch and battery but uh, yeah, so it won't take me much just to put the hole through there, drill that, and then uh, and get some um, primer on this. And there's two different colours that need to be done as a base coat on this. Going by the instructions are here. So we've got the darker colour here, which I'll have to go through my paints and organise, and then we've got a lighter grey there. So basically all this here is going to be dark black with a couple of bits under here and a little piece in here that's going to be black. So we're probably going to need to be masking off some bits, some sections there. But in the meantime, a full um, primer base coat, uh, primer undercoat uh, is all that's needed for the moment. And we don't need to do underneath here because that's all going to be sealed. But I will have to do, sorry, I can't see that there. But I will have to do around this edge because I think that that may be viewable. I will just double check on how the rubber cushion fits in uh, and how far up that comes. Um, but it wouldn't hurt to at least undercoat it anyway. Figure that out. Um, yeah, but even if even looking at the picture now of this here, you can see that there is that section there that can be seen below the cushion. So that's obviously going to be uh, a grey of some sort. All right. So I shall be back when uh, these are glued together and we've got a base coat and we get to new to use our new airbrush excited for that okay back in a second okay so i almost did what i wasn't going to do and that's to do stuff off camera i can show you here that this can be done on camera because i want to test my new camera all oh, it's a matter of just running this down through here touching it there capillary action that it has we'll finish it run it all the way where we want just do in here Good. Just put that there to dry. Once again, 
just run this across here. dry and I need to put those on too that I these on. I don't think you need to watch me do that. Okay, back a sec. Okay, I'm back again. And I'm just showing you here where I'm planning on working out where our little power is going to be for the light. So this is going to be underneath the, what would you call it? Let me show you. So we're looking at this section here, which is underneath the hull all right so that's turned up the other way and it'll be under there all right and then connected to that will be the rubber cushion which is quite gives quite enough clearance so the idea here what i'm planning is that this is my power switch and we have a little on off and it's on the side of the hovercraft where the pilots will be in their little control room so there's going to need to be a hole down here to run these wires down through and to come up through the deck and into the structure where where the pilot is so what i'm thinking is i've marked about the size i need here and i'm just going to use some plastics some styrene here and i'll cut it to length and it needs to be just 10 millimeters high so I've already measured if it's 10 millimeters high it'll just clear the top of this and be enough to fit in the grooves there and can be glued in there you know what I mean so I'm just going to cut a tiny little piece and basically make a little shelf so that all I have to do is slide that in there it will stay underneath the little styrene cover it'll be out of sight under the model and um, i can just turn the light on and off uh, if i want i could take it out turn it on and off it wouldn't be it wouldn't need to i just need to slide that in there you know and and have enough just that little bit there will be poking out so that we can just reach and flick the switch when I lift the model up to turn on the light, and turn it off. Simple. That's that's the plan. Um, if it does slide straight through, that's no problem. I can just put a piece on the back and cover the back. Um, but it shouldn't. All right, so that's done. Um, just bring this up a bit. So the ramps are 
undercoated with Mr. Surfacer 1000 and uh, I just sprayed those and I've done the deck as well it's outside drying I'm going to let that dry the rest of the day I'm not going to touch that I know it's, it's undercoat probably alright in a couple of hours but I want that to set really really well then then I will look at uh, what colours that deck needs to be and we'll go through the paint and, and see what's needed but while that's all drying, uh, yeah, I'm going to work on this now. All right, back again in a sec. Okay, so there you go. I've cut a couple little strips there. They're sitting, they glued in, super glued in. And then I cut a small piece to size on the top, which will fit on pretty much like that. And then that just slides in there firmly that's not going to fall out it's not going to go anywhere so no need to put anything on the back there yeah that's perfect so there's our little holder for our on off switch which you can simply take on and off easily and there'll be a hole I'll figure out where but there'll be a hole going through here and then through the deck for our light I'm just going to glue that, that piece onto onto there now and uh, that'll be done now I won't even need to paint this although I probably will I guess I'll just paint it black just so I mean not that no one's ever going to look under here but it'll match the um the air cushion of the craft so I just thought I'd show you that bit okay once again back in a sec okay welcome back again so here's our undercoated um, base and what I need to do here is I've worked out how I'm going to paint this now what I need is silver down here and uh, it says Tammy X11 which is uh, chrome silver so that's got to be painted down the side here. If you look at the paint chart here, that's what we're going on. So pretty much I'll just, um, you know, just give that a spray or roughly all the way to cover that. And then on both sides and then on the back there. So that'll be here, here, and down here. And then what I'll do is I'll let that dry um for a good amount of time and then i'll be able to mask it up for the black which is a metal black which we've got here so that'll be um all this section here and it looks like out here as well i'll just have to make sure i get that accurate just take up tape up the silver and then uh and get all that done in the black metal black then there's two spots here uh one on here and one here that is uh h32 which is a gray it's dark gray which i have here xf24 that'll be the dark gray to do just these spots in here now a lot of this is underneath all the modules and superstructure that's going to go on both sides. So I don't know how detailed this needs to be. These areas here don't really need to be painted. It's just these here in between that you'll be able to see that need to be that silver. But I will go back and check through the instructions of how much that silver area is actually visible. Uh, and then, of course, go and we'll have a look at the real um, hovercraft and just see how accurate it all is. Okay. All right, so I'm going to stop the video here. We're getting up close to an hour. Time goes fast <laughs> when you're having fun. So the next video, part two, we'll, have, we'll get this um, painted, some paint on here. Um, 
probably get these uh, ramps painted as well. And then we'll move on to some little bits and pieces that need to go on the deck itself. Okay, so uh, again, thanks for watching. Please um, comment below if you've got any comments and questions or any tips or particularly if you've built this before. I don't mind getting a few hints on what's ahead of me. I've already heard from one person who's already warned me about how tight the um, air cushion is that's going to go on the bottom of this, but we'll, we'll get to that in the next video too, I suppose. And uh, please give us a thumbs up if you like it, if you like the video. And of course, subscribe and get notified as we have all these videos come out. I'm not sure if this will be a weekly or a bit more. We might be able to get these out more than a week. This build won't take long. There's not a great deal to it. So we'll see. We'll see how we go. All right. So again, thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, I'll see you all in part two. Cheers. Bye, all.